Hey, 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 what if Wednesday we're back? Look who's here with us. Sean, back from ignoring us. I know, three weeks in a row. Unbelievable. Attention is required in other places. We're building big things, not just here, everywhere, disrupting lots of industries. Stuff had to happen. But today, my partners are going to do that riff and jam over there. And I'm good. They're good. So we're going to riff and jam here. Brandon, my friend, I people don't know the absurdity that you have to suffer through and listen to when I get on a, a rant. I think the last thing I said to you was, no, the city doesn't have a rat <laughs> problem. They have a sanitation problem. More on that later. What city are we talking about? I don't know. Maybe you'll find out. Stick around. We're not yeah. talking about rats today. We're going to talk about something that's the opposite of rats. That is serenity. I've never seen rats and serenity coexist. So I think we'll bail on the rats and let's talk about serenity. So let's anchor in the architecture. Sean, where are we? Why is serenity a word we're talking about in business? Well, you distracted me though, because rats can be serene when they're not overcrowded. Once they get overcrowded. Talk to my wife. How about that? One rat, no serenity. <laughs> that kind of rat rats in the house no <laughs> no it's alignment of core values they're not in it for the same things that your wife is in it for and so therefore these two things cannot cohabitate there you go the architecture is always there there you go so what are we talking about we're talking about serenity so i love this i love this one it is one of the places where people come to us they come to us for lots of reasons but but two of the biggest places they come to is they say, we need more leads, which is almost never the right answer. They think that they want that, right? And the second thing they want, well, we, you get leads when you're ready for leads. But, and if you do it too soon, you're just destroying your business. But the second thing is they say, oh my God, I'm, I'm dying. I'm stressed out. I need, can you help me manage my time? And our answer always is no, any more than you cannot manage time, any more than the person in the raft manages the river. You navigate it. It is a constantly flowing thing, meaning nothing stays the same. If everything stayed the same, then life actually can't happen. Time is just a function of observing the process of change. Change must happen. Great. And there are only a limited number of hours in the day. We try to maximize our efficiency with them. We try to do lots of stuff all in the wrong place, not allocated to the right things because we didn't start where we needed to start with core values, mission, vision, purpose, and then into what we're actually going to be doing and deciding how much of that must be done by we go through the four Ds, we can unpack that in a minute. And then we understand this is the stuff that we have and we can allocate time to that with purpose and clarity and discernment, which allows us to cut away all the crap that we're trying to do, which is really what people come to. Tell me all, oh my God, I have so much stuff. What can I not do? Well, they say, what should I be doing? But it's really, what should I not be doing? And that becomes very easy if you go down that path and decide, okay, now I know what not to do. And the inverse of that is, what should I be doing? And we say, let's break that down into a 13-week sprint. And here's how to allocate your time every day and your energy and your willpower. Willpower has to come into play when mission is not aligned with activity. And so, right, so my purpose, I'm doing this stuff and it doesn't feel like it's moving me towards the thing I want to have done, right? So my purpose is misaligned with my activity. And so it takes willpower to do that. If you get, oh man, I get all kinds of energy from the gym. I know what my health means to me and I know what my health delivers to me in the motivational, my why, my, I, I want longevity for my kids or ability to do X, Y, Z, whatever it is. 
When that happens, you're going to the gym. No willpower is required in that. Oh, you have so much willpower, you go to the gym. No, there's no willpower there. That is a forceful, powerful claiming of the space and the purpose and the reason why you're doing it and the outcomes you're going to get from it. No willpower there. But I have to do 11 things today and I hate all of them and I don't really know how it gets real. It's just stuff I have to do. Yeah, because you started all kinds of things that you didn't need to start. You launched things that shouldn't have been launched. You're trying to do things that really don't move the ball forward. Yes, you're wasting time. And more importantly, willpower, because you need that, right? At the beginning of a diet, you got to force yourself to eat a few celery stalks that you wouldn't have eaten otherwise. But because you're not yet there to that alignment of, I see results from what I'm doing. The results are good. Body chemicals are raised. I'm feeling fantastic. I'm going to do the thing. No more willpower required. So people are draining. They're squandering time that there's only so much of and they are trying to control things they can't control and they are trying to serve too many purposes with their calendar it's all bass backwards as my father would say from start to finish so let's take a step back then because drop uh, that out there and then you want to help me unpack it yes there was like a hundred thousand things we can unpack <laughs> in that and we have 23 minutes. We're not going to do that here. We're going to do that on the inner circle. The essence of serenity is not time management, like you said, but if we go back a week and we talk about um, execution and what, what does this 12 week, 13 week sprint look like? That is really where serenity comes from because it's putting the right things on your calendar. And I don't even want to say delegating the rest. It's the four D's. So we can, we can unpack that too, like you said, but um, let's, Let's talk about this mindset versus hustle culture, because I think they're two vastly different messages. You have hustle culture saying, just go, go, go and do everything. And then you have this, the concept of serenity, which is the direct opposite of hustle culture. Go, so go, how go. do you get an entrepreneur to, to think this way and ignore everything else on the internet about just being a hustle bro? How do I get them to do that? Uh, I asked them one question. Does that, does it feel good? Does hustle bro feel good? I think everybody would say no, but that's all that we see. But so that's the first question though. As they're running past me, all dying, going, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. We're handing out water at the marathon, right? You know, and then there's a better way. There's a better <laughs> way. So they run by him. Somebody finally stops to take a drink. What is it? What it? Right. Does this feel good? No. Okay, come over here for a second, right? <laughs> and then we start to unpack the thing. So that's the first thing. If you want some clarity there, that maybe there's a better way, you want to start to ask, what if, what if what I'm seeing is not the right way? We already know. We work with the Fortune 500. We know that most of the business success that people see and are trying to model is wrong. Those companies know it's wrong and bring us in to help them fix it. We know no better anywhere else, including wherever we're meeting the people listening to us right now. It's wrong. Does it feel good? Does it feel right? Because go, go, go. Okay. Go, go, go works when you have total alignment with your mission, with your bit. Brandon, we talk about this all, all, all day, right? What we're doing. Does it feel draining to you? Not one bit energizing as a matter of fact the complete and so, opposite and so one could say but you guys do that you're go 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 only because it feels good and it is the natural application of our energy and we have and we're not doing the 15 things very well-meaning people are telling us right now we should be doing and we're not because we're running the harmonious we're running harmonious we don't need to do all that stuff. We're laser focused on, on the stuff and we're doing it in a way that aligns with our values and it's fun. So it doesn't feel like go, 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 go. On a Saturday afternoon, of course I'm working on this stuff because we love it. And so 
the people go, oh my God, they go, go, go. That means there's already their business is a drain on them and someone's telling them, man up, make it rain, let's go, right? You know, lean it on their Lamborghini. Right. Okay. <laughs> but if the thing is already draining to somebody, you are exponentially throwing that stress and pressure on them, which you can do. That's where willpower comes in. That's short spurts, these short sprints to get you to a different place. That's stuff I don't want to do it, but we got to do it. You don't, maybe you don't, maybe you do. And when you do have to, there's been stuff that you're like, well, we really have to do this. I'm, I know. Okay. That's a sprint where willpower is involved. Now we're in a, now that that's been done, we're in a better place. We don't have to do that again. We're back to the rip and jam, which is how people. So the essence of serenity is I have clarity. I know when everybody goes running by me, I go, if you see me running like that, something better be chasing me. I don't know why they're running, but I don't have to. They're doing a different thing. I can't tell you how many people told me that if I didn't today claim my space on Clubhouse, I was a fool. I didn't understand marketing at all. Really? Clubhouse? This is the thing. Dude, it's the gold rush. You don't get there now. So many well-meaning people that now I bring up Clubhouse and they go, oh, they go, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Remember that? I remember you saying it was the key to everything. <laughs> now, how are we doing on all the other disciplines that are you are you still just playing around with marketing or you, have you thought about your business in other oh no you're still still marketing the answer is great but the lenses through which you saw the world said that clubhouse was the new gold rush and I watched you run by and went that's interesting and I now you're back here getting a cup of water to going what the hell happened yes Willpower on sprints. We don't need to be running. Serenity is, I understand, from concept to culture to execution to delivery to to thriving to all the, the life cycle of my business, I understand that doesn't have to be part of the game. That is one vehicle to do one element, one element of one discipline. Maybe it's important, maybe it's not. And so serenity is, I know how to not react, how to just execute on the promise I've made to my customers. And then secondarily, if there's some kind of explosion, chaos, whatever, I am very, when something goes down, I have a story that I tell where there was an event at a party where just disaster, skunks were involved, dogs running through the house, mess. Everyone looked to me and I said, this is what we do. How, do you, how are you so, calm? because I'm clear in that moment, and I mean all the time, but in that moment, I was very clear as to what had to be done and in what order it needed to be done to serve everybody and get through the crisis. So serenity isn't disaster free. There is no way that's in the risk and defense module that we talk about, right? Where you plan for disasters and they can execute on it. But, but the essence of serenity is even through whatever is happening, I see the course and I can keep us on it. That's the essence of serenity. And you only get there when you can quiet the noise, right? So we went through the, with people, the core values, the mission, the vision, and all those steps. We know how to navigate. We know who we're serving, right? We know what our processes need to be. And so now that we're starting to execute on things, we say, well, what do I need to do versus everybody else? Because entrepreneurs do everything in the, in the reverse how they should do it. They first because not because they're bad, because they love their thing and they're running and gunning and they're executing like we are, right? They they love it. They're pouring themselves in. But they do everything and they think first, I have to do everything. And then I can't do all of it enough. So I gotta hire somebody. People say, oh yeah, outsource, outsource. 
it, maybe your cousin, maybe somebody in the Philippines for, you know, 12 cents an hour. It's great. Whatever that outlet valve is, they're like, another whoosh, a whole bunch of work just goes over there. Stuff that they don't like doing, they find draining, shoved over there with no mission, vision, purpose, right? Maybe, but still. So now it's whoosh. Now that work's getting done. And then new ideas are coming in. We're trying to do all of them. And we just get totally overwhelmed. We can't push anything anywhere else. We're doing it all. And then we say, help. And they come to us. And we say, we go back to the beginning, start, get, understand everything that must be done now, and then get to this place and say, okay, you have to first say, can I delete it? Right? Meaning, Wait, we pause. really have to do it. Now Before we go into the four Ds. Yeah. We're going to, let's pause. So this is, this is the action part of the show. We're going to get into, get your notepads out. We're going to go through the four Ds. We're going to figure out what does serenity look like. But before we get there, you touched on something super important that we, we have to anchor in before we get to the four Ds. You said the word delegate and you, you even referenced the mission, vision, core values. We're not going to go into that, but I had a conversation, actually I had two conversations this week, two days ago where people were talking about this exact thing about, you know, they're so busy and oh my company's growing, I but I want to delegate because I'm the entrepreneur, right? And they said, both of them had the same story. They hired people in the Philippines for 12 cents an hour and whoever you get to delegate to, that's fine. But there was no direction for that person. And then what ended up happening was there was, no, there was also no process, which we're not, we're not getting into here, but it touches another discipline. So there's no concrete process. There was no direction. There was no purpose behind what this person was doing. And this could be in the Philippines, in the U.S., whatever. It could be your cousin, like you said. If you don't have this stuff ironed out, you're, what you end up doing is more doing. Because what happened is they delegated. And then when this person sent it back to them for review, they had to fully redo it. So now you've wasted money, you've wasted time and your, your willpower, and you're still doing things. You're now doing more. So it's this never-ending cycle. So let's let's first iron out what do we need to start delegating and then let's go through the four d's and really iron out how to go through this on your your daily checklist of things that you're currently doing so that we can have some action steps to take from here yeah so so you need to understand first what your value chain is how do you take nothing raw materials ideas concepts, whatever it is that you take and make into some kind of value for somebody. So that could be, I take raw metals and refine them into left-handed widgets to, um, I'm a marketing genius and I have 187 years of marketing experience. Some of the early stuff we did with, you know, sheep and what was working like 187 years ago? I don't know. Right. Anyway, uh, I, I'm a marketing genius. I've done it forever. And I, and I take those concepts and I give people clarity on their marketing. I give people new, I help tell them how to generate leads, whatever, the, whatever your thing is, physical service, doesn't matter. What is the core value dry process? How do you take those things and then deliver that? value to your clients that these are your core value drivers value chains <clears throat> you will have supportive processes running underneath these which are supportive hopefully mostly of them secondarily of you because many people make that we get into that when we get into process and of the of the not engineering your processes to serve you better and then pissing off your clients happens all day every day because people forget that we're building value chain uh, and then we decide now of this these are the primary functions if i don't do these things value doesn't get delivered to those people that it just now it's a hobby and me in my garage banging around doing stuff if these things don't happen. So these things must happen. What of those things must be done by me? That goes above the line. That is the golden line. These things must be with me. Okay. Now 
do I have extra time for other stuff that I can do, that I want to do, that I like to do? Because a lot of times entrepreneurs will say, I have no time. Let me look at where you're spending it. Oh, there's a significant part here doing the copywriting, but isn't Brandon a good copywriter? Yeah, but you know me, I just love writing. Well, cut the shit. Well, what do you mean? That's the part I like. Well, right on the weekends, you don't have to, you just told me you're overworked. Yes. These nine things must come from you and can only come from you. Yes. Yes. And they take up all of your time. Yes. And then there's the copywriting. Yes. And can someone else do it? Yes. There's your answer. But those, those parts are fun. I, I, I never said business shouldn't be fun. I get it. But you told me that's the play. These things must only be done by you. Let's revisit them. Can they only be done? Because they probably can't. But that's now we have a place to have that conversation. Right? So what must be done by you, what the things that can be done by somebody else and should be done or what could delegate it. And then what can't we get to that we still want to do at some point? We're going to delay it. We put it in a queue. It's going to sit there. It isn't lost. It's teed up. We revisit it with a, right? There is a time and a place in the calendar where we revisit it. Nothing's getting lost. It's fine. And then the rest are deleted. This is nonsense. It's a distraction. Can't be done. But it should be done. That's how they end up doing it. I take on everything. I then push stuff to somebody else. And then more somebody else's. And when I can't hire enough people to get to all the stuff, things get delayed just because we can't get to it. And then eventually they totally die on the vine and get deleted through neglect. That's how it happens all day, every day. Unless you're purposely doing it the other way, which is the second it comes in, I go, well, that would be nice. Yeah, nonsense. Deleted. Let's not talk about it again. There's some legs of this. Let's delay it. Not now. We know, Brandon and I know there's things we're going to be doing. That's like, right? In my other businesses, I just got off a call today. Very exciting this morning. We literally put it on the calendar to say, this is going to be like a three year from now thing. And we're not going it, to, it's going to simmer there. We'll revisit it when we need to, but we're not distracting ourselves now because it's very shiny, very cool. Not, not ready. And then there's, so, right. And so this is how it should be. We've already gotten rid of two things. Now what it can be done that I can delegate. Delegate first to protect your calendar. This stuff has to have that happen. None of it has to be me. So now let me tee it up for someone to understand how to execute on it within our model. And then the stuff that falls to me that I must do is the nature of the thing. And I don't want to do those, then I don't want to be in this business. And any extra time I have, now I can have fun and riff and jam and do the things that I always thought I would have for my business. And why can't you come and give it to me? Because you built it in the wrong way. We got to go and demolish all of that and rejigger it and give it back to you in a place that you now have clarity and purpose so that when the dog does kill a skunk and come running through the party and people are screaming and tables are getting knocked over. Someone goes, you get a leash, you get me the shovel out of the garage, garbage bag, hopefully some, we have some fireplace gloves. That's great, right? Like, and this is what we're doing in the order in which we're doing. And you go to the basement and check and see how many cans of tomato soup we have. There is a that's how serenity becomes present, which is really all people are asking us for when they say, my calendar's nuts. How do I do a better calendar? Thing? You know how many mini webinars there are out there about how to maximize your Google calendar and how to use Pomodoro timers and all kinds of stuff. And it's like, that's so cute. And it's nice and it's helpful when someone's already ready for it and not drowning under a sea of bullshit that they shouldn't be working on. Do kids watch this? Kids don't watch this. Nobody watches this. 
Why? Use whatever language you want. <laughs> Does that so, make sense? There's a lot there. There's a lot there. So let's take the skunk example because I think if you if you really unpack that story, there was a, a tip there. So we're going to run through the the four D's, right? Whatever when you're looking at your calendar, hopefully you're using a calendar to manage your time. If you're not, start. So we run through the four days. We go with delete first. If you're doing something that is just totally BS for you to do, it doesn't serve your company, it doesn't drive revenue, get it out. From there, the process that you identified with the skunks was very important. Nobody else at this party had thought about the process of what would happen if a skunk ran in here or a dog with a dead skunk ran in here, right? So that to me is the next step. Whether you have the ability to delegate, or you're planning on it, you're a solopreneur, you have a team of 50,000, you have to get ready to delegate. Now, again, we're not touching on process this week. That's coming in the next couple of weeks. But what do you do when you're starting to reclaim your calendar and achieve serenity? What, what's the first step process-wise that you need to be aware of so that this isn't just some thing that's going to happen three years in the future? You can actually claim your calendar back like in the next two weeks. So if somebody hasn't... So, right. So if somebody hasn't done all the other steps that we've talked about. Well, yes, yeah, start there first, but then right. now but look, they at haven't done you that. have that. They haven't done that in the seconds we have left. If they're not going to come in this room and, and, and have us give them a full model, just know this, you, no one had a plan for what happened at that party and how to execute on it. But I have an, ex, I have an, a model to execute, to ascertain what's happening and execute. I was the only one that had that in that particular, just like no EMT knows what they're going to walk up on in a scene, but they know how to triage. That's all I'm telling you is you must have a triage process for everything that's going to come in now and demand the resource of time needs to have there must be a process to get to that resource. Just like, you know, give a credit card to a 13 year old and say, Amazon's a thing, have at it. There's a process to, uh, to access the funds, the resource of dad's money and his credit card or credit on the credit card, right? So time, limited resource, there must be a process to get to it. And I would love it when you get to the day where there's time on your calendar and no one was able to get on it. So you could put things on it yourself purposefully tied to the three giant things you're doing this quarter to move the ball forward for you. That's the use of your time. Yes. And that's what we're doing today. Last week, we identified, you know, taking your vision, planning out your next 13 weeks this year, the next three and five years. And today we're scheduling time on your calendar to execute on that and achieve the goals so they're not just these big lofty things in the future they're inevitable that's what we all want right we want to set goals that become inevitable milestones in your business so we're going to dive over there you see it on the screen what if.com slash inner circle if you want to learn more about joining us the first step though is to take the bad we talk about it every week this is the first time we're talking about it this week it's our diagnostic tool to figure out what exactly is going on in your business. It will give you clarity in eight minutes or less, or it's free, but it's already free. So just go take it. <laughs> and we're going to go hang out in the inner circle. We hope to see you there. Eight minutes or three, two minutes or three. Two. Okay, fine. You know what? It's, how about this? It's just free. We'll see you there. <laughs>